Hey guys, so today we are going to be using the Figma NCP server with cursor to take some design changes that we've received in Figma and then implement those in our actual API. Let's dive into it. Okay, so here's our Figma file. This is a form for listing a property that someone would want to sell. And in this form, we have a section for parking, right? You would want to sell your property and you would want to list all the parking spots that you have available. For the property so that's what's changed is the actual parking section here and we can see this file is quite extensive so there's many different frames showcasing like what it looks like when you have multiple parking stalls here so here they have two parking stalls then for the first stall and the second stall they have to specify like the size if there's an e-stall car lift and you can also add additional parking as well so you could have seen two parking spots where each have multiple stalls. So this is quite complex. It's going to be, I think, quite difficult for the MCP server to be able to handle all of this, at least in a one shot. I don't think that's going to be possible, to be honest. But I think to start, yeah, we're going to just try it out. We'll just give it a link to the page and just see what happens. OK, so I have cursor open. And I have my .NET Core application. So my API is what we built it with is .NET Core. We have our property parking here. And you can see these are all the existing fields that we have. So a lot of changes have to be made in this file. And we have another file for the input. This is like for the web API. It's a Swagger API. And then here's the command, which handles updating the actual property and all the parking spots. So let's go to our chat. Today, we are going to just try and use the auto mode. Still struggling to know what model to use. Do I use Cloud 3.5, 3.7? Do I try the new ChatGPT for? Do I try Gemini or do I just stick with auto? Yeah, if you guys have suggestions, leave them in the comments because yeah, I'm really struggling knowing which model to use. So we're going to add all the relevant files, give it as much context as we can. Property parking, property parking input, the actual command and the actual property itself. Okay, and now let's write our prompt. So I have my prompt here. We have received some design changes in Figma for the property parking section. Can you look at the Figma page attached below and make those changes in our API? Okay. So what I'm gonna try to is just give it the actual Figma page. So go here and copy the link to the page and then paste that below. So the MCP server should be able to access that. I have my MCP server running here and I can go on cursor and just make sure that it's connected and able to use the Figma MCP server. It's really easy to set up. So let's run this prompt now and see what happens. Okay, so I'll help you analyze the Figma design changes and implement in the API. Let me first check the Figma design. Okay, your conversation is too long. Please try creating a new conversation or shortening your messages. That makes sense. The Figma page is huge, right? If you think about all the different elements in it. So yeah, it's just probably way too much context. So we're going to have to break this down clearly. I'm not sure do we start one by one or give it multiple. Let's start one by one. Okay, so we're giving it the first one. We have received some design changes in the Figma for the property parking section. Can you look at the Figma frame attached below and make those changes in our API? Actually, let's give it multiple frames. We have multiple frames. I'll give you a few to start, but there will be more. Yeah, so I'm not sure the best way to approach this when you have just many different frames like here, this is when they have one parking stall available. And then these inputs become available basically that they have to fill out. And then here is yet two parking spots. So maybe I'll give it this one as well because it showcases like what it looks like if there's two parking stalls. Could probably infer, oh, one parking stall would mean there's only the first stall available, but I'm really not sure. Let's give it that one. And then, yeah, these are the different parking types seems which I can probably just tell it all the different parking types because the parking types don't seem to actually change any of the input values. And then this one would probably be relevant where you can have right multiple parking spots. So you click add additional parking and then yeah, there's like a list of parking. But I think we already have a list of parking spots. Like our property already can have a multiple parking spots. So that's not like a new change, I think. And let's give it this one. Okay, so let's see if we can handle that. Okay, that's cool. It's getting checking all the frames. So all different three. And let's see what it's saying. The parking section now needs to support multiple parking spots with detailed information. Each parking spot needs to have parking type, single tandem, 
number of parking stalls, interior exterior location, parking location for each stall, stall size, assigned stall number, e-charging capability, car lift capability. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I was able to extract the actual inputs, the location, the interior. Okay, it's making changes to our JSON file. Shouldn't, that's auto-generated. Changing the migration. All right, so, so not changing the files, it should be changing. Like the migrations, this is an auto-generated file from our ORM, so it shouldn't be doing this. All right, that's pretty dumb. And I don't know, do I stop it? Don't change the auto-generated files. The migration are generated from a core. Same with the Swagger JSON file. It's auto-generated. All right, so gonna help it out a bit because it was changing files. It shouldn't have been changing. Again, why well, you probably need to be a developer to understand that. Now it understands. Let me update the domain model first. Okay, so it's changing that parking location type. So it's adding that new property, parking location, and number of stalls, adding a list of number of stalls, and then adding a new entity are parking stalls, right? The property parking ID, that's the foreign key. The stall size, assigned stall number, has e-charging, has car lift. And then yeah, parking type, parking location type, parking location. These are probably all wrong because I don't actually know what the values are. Yeah, the designers probably don't specify. They like to do that where they put a drop down, but don't give us the actual values. Did they include the values anywhere? Nope. Anyways, we'll go with what it came up with and I'll have to reach out to the designers to get that. Okay, so here's the summary of the changes. Updated property parking, domain model to support parking type, location type, parking location, number of stalls, collection of parking stalls, create a new parking stall domain model, updated enums, updated input, Okay, did it update our command? Yeah, it seems like it didn't actually update the command to handle the logic to set the stalls here. They didn't actually update the logic in the actual command. So we have to have it do that now. Can you also now handle the create slash edit logic for the changes in the create or edit property listing? command. Okay, so I can see here it's updating the fields with the new fields that we added, handling the existing stalls. So adding the logic for now handling the fact we can have multiple stalls in a parking spot. So here, yeah, handling the updating of them, setting the fields, here handling the removal of them and adding the new stalls. Okay, add new parking spots. Here's a summary of what it did. So for existing parking spots, updated property mapping for new parking spots. Yeah. So that seems pretty good. We also need to make changes in our DTO as well. Forgot about that. But the property parking detail is like when we have to return it via the API. So we need to update the fields there as well. So we'll give it this. Can you also update our with the change? Yeah, made all the changes. That's pretty good. And added the new DTO here. Perfect. So yeah, let's go see if this compiles and runs. Okay, so in our Swagger API, I can see the new fields and the list of stalls has been added. So that seems pretty solid. And now we can go test it out and see if it actually works. So I'm using Postman to do these tests. So we're gonna go create a new property. I'm actually gonna use Cursor now to actually help me generate some test data. So just gonna say, can you give me some JSON now to test this new parking spot? Changes BI Postman. I just need the JSON for the parking spots, right? Give me the various ones, aka some with two stalls, some with multiple parking spots and multiple stalls. So this is what it gave me. Okay, but yeah, the these need to be numbers because they're enums. The enum should be numbers though. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'll copy this now, bring this over to Postman and paste it here. So I'm just gonna replace this. Now let's see if this works. So yeah, this one is just one with one parking spot and two stalls. So it returns our property. And yeah, we can see it seems like it kind of worked. Yeah, interior level, number of stalls, and here's the stalls. Okay, now if I were to remove a stall, what happens? Ah, it crashed. So yeah, there seems to be some error when I do an update, some database. So just gonna give it that error and have it fix that. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't deleting the stalls when it was deleting a parking spot. Yeah, because we're not specifying the ID of the parking spot, it actually will delete it and create a new one. If you wanna edit an existing parking spot, you do need to pass the ID. All right, still getting an error. Seems like it's the same error for some reason. So I guess it did not fix it. I mean, we'll try again, but I'm gonna give it a bit more context this time. Here is the error. Okay, and so I'm explaining to it how it should work. Like if they do not specify the ID in the parking spot, 
then that signals it's a new one. And then anything that is in the database that is not in that list, we simply just remove. We assume that, yeah, they don't want it anymore. So property loads existing parking spots from the database with their stalls included. Create a list of parking spot IDs to keep based on the input. Delete parking spots and their stalls that are not in the input. Save the changes after deletion to ensure they're processed before additions. Clear separation between updating existing spots. Okay, so let's see if that works. Okay, we're, so we're gonna see if this works now. Okay, so the request went through. Did it make those changes? It did, so now we have one parking spot with one stall. If we add it back now with two stalls, is it going to work? Yes, and you see the ID changes. So if I put in the ID now, it should keep the same parking spot, but just update the actual stalls. Yeah, so it did that. And it's the same thing with the stalls. If we give it the ID, that stall should not be erased. Okay, good. And then, yeah, we could change this, let's say, to false. And it's changed to false. That's good. Change number of stalls to one. Yeah, that should probably be the thing they can't set since it is in the array, like how many stalls they have. But yeah, I can change that later. And now let's try adding a new parking spot. So I'll just copy this one here. Take the ID, okay? And we'll get rid of the ID since we're creating a new one. And let's just change some of the values here. So type one, I don't know what type is. And then attached location type, we'll change it to two or one. Front, we'll change that to three. And then we'll add two stalls, let's say, okay? So let's run that now. So we should have two parking spots and we do. The second one has two stalls. Okay, cool. And now if I remove this one, this should disappear, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So that's it for today. I mean, that was quite surprising how well that worked. Honestly, I thought it was going to struggle with that much context. Like as we saw with the first test, right? When we gave it the whole page, no, it was just too much information because we have nine different frames in there, I guess. I don't even know if the tool can work that way. If you can give it a whole page, because all the examples I've seen is you have to give it a specific frame so we were able to give it three frames and from there was able to have a really solid start and we had to work with it a bit and it did produce some errors right the code was crashing when we were removing parking spots so i had to be able to understand what was happening by looking at the errors and then giving it the error but even then i wasn't able to fix it i had to understand how the implementation worked to give it more context but this was quite fast to make this change. I mean, this probably would have taken me like two hours maybe to do, to make all the changes in the necessary files. And yeah, I was able to do this in 30 minutes. So pretty cool. I'm surprised at how well that worked. Yeah, I just thought it would be too much for it. So definitely gonna be considering using this in my flow now when I have these types of changes to make. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, please subscribe for more.